All right, as Emerson Stevens once said, the last shall be first. So we're going to start this review going number 38 and working backwards. Imagine that. So according to what we learned during class, every picture tells a story. 0, 010, I'm just going to put it right here. 0, negative 10 will just go down here. And it does say this is a hyperbola, and the foci are here and here, which is telling us that this is going to be, uh, it's going to tell us well, a couple things. First of all, the center of the hyperbola is a zero, zero, which makes it an easy one. Because it's going to be going this way, generically speaking, I don't know that that's accurate. We know that it's going to be a y squared over a squared minus x squared over b squared equals 1. So now we need to go on the hunt. So one thing we do know from this is that c equals 10. We might use that a little later, but it says 1 vertex is 0, negative 8. So that's telling us that the vertex right here is 0, negative 8. Now we could assume that the other one would be 0, positive 8, just if some of you need to see like what the drawing would look like, kind of, sort of. But it also tells us, by telling us this, that A equals 8, or A squared equals 64. So we know we could put that in here. Y squared over 64 minus X squared. we got to find B squared, and we'll be done. We know that C is 10. We know the formula is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared is 64. b squared, we're trying to find it. c squared, well, that would be 100. So we can subtract b squared from both sides and get 36. Now, you don't have to take the square root of both sides because you're looking for b squared. And there's number 38. All right, number 37 tells us it's an ellipse. We should be able to know that by looking at the squared stuff, squared stuff, plus. Anyways, I've already located the center of this ellipse. This tells us move 2 to the right. This tells us move down 3. And there it is, 2, negative 3. Now, because this is bigger than this, and this is underneath my x, I know that the foci are going to be on this axis. Now, I don't need to draw the drawing perfect. What they're asking for is the foci, so we need to find C. Well, this formula is A squared minus B squared equals C squared, and all our information is just spoon-fed to us. So 13 minus 9 is C squared. So 4 is C squared. Take the square root, and this is a good time to go bada-boom, bada-bing, do the right thing. And the square root of 4 is just 2, so plus or minus 2. Now remember, that's the distance I need to move on the major axis, which is my x-axis, uh, to find the foci, which means I need to move left 2, which would take me to, whoops, which would take me right to here, 0, negative 3. But I need to move right 2, which would take me to 4, negative 3. So if I was to draw the drawing, it would look something like this, but you don't need to draw the drawing. So there's, there are the foci. 0, negative 3, 4, negative 3. All right, so now we're going to dive into the parabolas. And one of the things that I emphasized was, let's go back to what we learned earlier in this very trimester, and let's make our parabolas look like this, you know, or this, which is up or down. In other words, um, y equals ax squared, you know, get the unsquared variable alone. Get the unsquared variable alone, which means we got to get this alone. So we're going to make this crazy thing look like one of these basic ones. So I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to get rid of this. By multiplying by negative 1 8, then I'm going to flip it. So it's x plus 1 equals negative 1 8 y plus 4 squared. Now back in Algebra 2, we would stop there, but if we subtract 1 from both sides, we'd get this, negative 1 8 
y plus 4 squared minus 1. Now it says find the directrix right here and the vertex. Well, we're going to start with the vertex because you should. And that's where this feeds us the information. Now, because this is an x equals y squared kind, this goes along with this. So this is going to go left 1. This is my y. And because it's y plus 4, you're going to go down 4. So left 1, down 4. I know because this is negative, it's going to be a Pac-Man eating in the x direction in the negative direction. Now that's huge that I get this drawing. So my vertex is negative 1, negative 4. Now, I need to be able to figure out what C is so I can find the directrix. So remember, A equals 1 over 4C. So, I know what A is. It's 1 eighth. Notice I'm ignoring the negative because C is a distance. And we go 4 times what is 8? Well, C has to be 2, which means I need to move 2 units back this way. And that would be my directrix, which I taught is the soil. So that would be x equals 1. So there's my directrix. There's my vertex. Okay, so we're up to 36A in complete reverse. So, speaking of reverse, we are going to multiply this by 1 fourth and flip it. Because we're trying to isolate our variable that is not squared. So this would turn into y plus 3 equals 1 fourth times x minus 2 squared. Algebra 2, that would have been fine, but then pre-calc wanted this over. But remember, you see how that 3 is connected to the y? Keep that in mind, because now it's over here. And so we get y equals 1 fourth x minus 2 squared minus 3. So we got to draw a little picture. Doesn't have to be perfect. Where's our vertex? Well, that sends it where? To the right, 2. 1, 2. Where does this send it? Down 3. 1, 2, 3. So there's our vertex. 2, negative 3. That is our vertex. Now we got to look at this thing and ask ourselves, is it one of these, 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 or these? Well, because it's a y equals x squared kind and a is positive, it's going to be a happy face. And that tells me a lot because now I can find the directrix once I find c. There's my a. a equals 1 over 4c. As you can see, no pun intended, c equals 1. So I'm going to go down 1. And there's my soil or my directrix. And the equation of that would be y equals negative 4. All right, so this is the common basis happy places section. We got an 8 and we got a 4. What's my common base going to be? It's going to be a 2. So that's going to be 2 cubed to the x plus 1 power. That's going to be 2 squared to the 3x minus 3 power. Now i got to remember my basic rules. When you raise a power to a power, you multiply. So this is 2 to the 3x plus 3 power equals 2 to the 6x minus 6 power. Why do we want common bases? So that they can disappear. Now this has to equal this. So 3x plus 3 equals 6x minus 6. So I subtract 3x, subtract 3x, add 6, add 6. Boom. This is 9 equals 3x. Divide by 3. Uh, yeah, x is 3. All right, let's just keep moving on this. Uh, number 34 is just a log. So we know to start here. That's our base. See, we're turning this logarithmic equation into a typical exponential equation. So that's 5. Then we go to here. Squared equals whatever's in our answer spot. And now it's just basic math 101. That's 13. So 25 equals x plus 13. If we subtract 13 from both sides, we get 12. That shouldn't be too bad for you guys. Now, what does the word simplify mean? Simplify really means solve. For what? For x. Wait, I don't see one. Exactly. You need to know that every logarithm has three parts. We're going to start by putting in this. 
There's our x. So you got to know when they say simplify, you got to put in your own x. Base, exponent, answer. Now we go common bases, happy places. I'm going to turn that 9 into a 3 squared. I'm going to turn that 27 into a 3 cubed. And now power to a power, I multiply. So this is 3 to the 2x equals 3 cubed. And now common bases disappear. 2x equals 3. Divide by 2, x equals 3 halves. There we go. 33b. There's a missing x there. Start here, go here, then here. That's an always base, exponent, answer. Again, common bases, happy places. I got an 8 and a 16. I got to turn this into 2 cubed. I got to turn the 16 into 2 to the 4th. This one has a little rule. Power to power we multiply. So it's really 2 to the 3x equals 2 to the 4th. The bases disappear, so this stuff has to equal that stuff. 3x equals 4 divided by 3x is 4 thirds. Okay, here's number 32. This is saying take these two logs and write them as a single log. This is what I called marriage. In other words, the two shall become one. What are the rules? Well, what I said was look out for law three first. Law three is right here. Anything in front of a logarithm, you can put up here as an exponent. And now I have a power to a power situation. So this is gone. So I have the natural log of x to the fourth y to the eighth plus natural log of x cubed y. What does addition mean? That's my marriage rule. That's, that means multiply. So that turns into one log if we multiply this stuff together. So when the bases are the same, you're multiplying, you add the exponents. Same thing here. There's an invisible one there, so that'd be one, or excuse me, y to the ninth. All right, so here's a bunch of evaluate. Another word for evaluate is simplify. Another word for simplify, if you were listening to the previous problem, is to solve for the x. Now, again, don't panic. If I said the square root of 49, you know, there's invisible stuff all over the place. There's an invisible one there. There's an invisible two there. You don't put it in there, but it's there. That's kind of what this is saying. It's like, hey, evaluate, which means simplify, which means solve for x, which means there needs to be an x there. So base, exponent, Answer, and you got to use common sense. When you, raise some, when you raise something to a certain power, you get a 1. The only way you can do that is if you raise something to the 0 power. There's no common basis, happy places there. That's just common sense. Here's another trick. When there is no base, just like there was a missing 2 here, that is implied that there's a 10 here. So that's missing part number 1. Missing part number 2 is right there. You always start with the base. Then you go to the exponent, and that equals what I call the answer. Well, I can just look at that and say x is 2. See how this one had a missing base? So does this. But you see this natural log? That's telling you that the base is an e. You just need to know that. And that you put your equals x in. You start here. You go there. That's what you do. There's my base. There's my exponent. And that e to the fourth is all of my stuff in the answer spot. And I can use some common sense here and go, aha, x has to equal 4. This one, I think, I'm just going to take go out on a limb and say you're supposed to think of it like this. And if we go, aha, there's a 10 there and then there's an x there, uh, we'd go 10 to some power equals negative 8. Is there any way you could raise 10 to a certain power and get a negative? No. So this is no solution. This one, there's an invisible 10 there. There's an x there. So this base to that power looks like this. And then that's my stuff in my answer position. And again, these disappear. So x is 7. That's all I'm going to be able to fit in this one. So keep working, guys.